Hey, it's Jens. Today I'm going to show you how to actually build a cheap DIY laminar flow hood. In the last video, I've covered some very important topics like how to choose the right components so that the laminar flow hood will eventually work. Because when the fan, for example, is not strong enough, you will have an expensive filter system, but still risk contamination. So today I'm going to focus on how to put everything together while keeping the costs as low as possible and make this thing work as good as possible. Intro. For the case of the filter, I've used some old shelves out in my basement, so the case actually cost me zero euro. There's one thing that I have to point out, that is the ceiling. Normally those HEPA filters come with a ceiling, and here the ceiling shows to the inside direction. Normally it shows to the outside direction. But then you need an additional layer of wood to press the ceiling against, as it's shown in this example here. Let's take a closer look on this laminar flow hood you can buy on the internet, and that costs around 1,000 euro. And that is actually the reason why I have built this version. Of course, it does not look as professional as the one you can buy on the internet, but it works the same, maybe even better, because I have used a very strong fan here. So that's actually the reason for the video, because I don't, and I think you also don't want to spend 1000 euro for a laminar flow hood of this size. That's why I've bought a filter for about 60 to 70 euro and a fan which costs about 100 euro on Amazon. So everything together will cost me under 200 euro for a laminar flow hood. I don't know, is that a lot of money? When you compare it to professional laminar floats you can buy on the internet, I think it's a pretty good deal and just one or two hours of work and you'll have your own laminar float for under 200 euros. So why did I put the filter in this direction? The answer is because I was actually just a little too lazy and I think it is not necessary to build an additional frame because I've just used silicone to seal and glue everything together and it works the same. Yeah, it just saved me some time building this laminar float when using silicone instead of a more complex construction. Let's talk about the basic concept of this laminar flow hood. Let's remove this for a second. Um, we have here the filter with the depth of about seven centimeters. So you need a base plate of about 30 centimeters so that there is enough space to mount the fan on top of your laminar float. I've seen extremely huge laminar floats on the internet, but I think you just need so much space. Just get sure that the fan has enough space here to push the air through the filter. So the gap between the filter and the back of your case should be bigger than the depth of the fan. For the frame, I've just measured the length and the height of the filter, which is 30 centimeter times 60 centimeter. So I've added a material thickness to the height and just cut out the wood for the frame. Before screwing everything together, I'd recommend to drill some holes depending on the wood you use. Otherwise this happens and yeah, you have to seal everything again. Then I've cut a bigger hole on the top for the fan and sealed and glued everything together with silicon. So I've also used some screws, but silicon is really the most important part of this laminar flow hood because this prevents the flow hood from leaking. A few sentences about the fan I've used here. This is actually pretty cheap. This is actually made for a jump house for kids. But the advantage is that it's a radio fan, it is really powerful. And because it's made of plastic, it is actually pretty cheap. But because of the cheap housing, I had to seal everything again with silicon. Because afterwards, when I did my first test and I used a lighter to see if there are some leaks, there were a lot. One reason to make the whole case even bigger is actually that you might want to have a box on the fan of your filter because the fan is extremely loud. Let me just demonstrate. It is powerful, it is loud, but for me it's okay. Maybe I'll build a case in future, but yeah, it works great and that's the most important part for me. Let's take a look on the back side. There you can see that I have added an additional filter mat. And this is actually very important because we want our HEPA filter to last as long as possible. And without the pre-filter, there will come a lot of dirt and dust inside and the filter will or needs to be replaced maybe after one or two years. And with the pre-filter, maybe it will last a year longer. And here are a few tips how to de or increase the working area when using a 30 times 60 laminar fluid. The first thing is that I use some wood just to lift it up a little so that the working height is bigger. 
Then normally I add this windshield here just to prevent any dust and dirt from the top to enter our working area. And when doing agar work, I use this table here just to center the petri dishes inside the laminar fluid. I really hope that you think that this video was helpful when you think of building your own DIY as cheap as possible laminar flow hood to grow mushrooms at home. If there are any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm gonna help you as much as I can so that you'll also have no contaminations in future. Yeah, thanks for watching. And now I'm gonna inoculate some hardwood sawdust with some fresh mycelium. See you in the next.